Good morning, everyone. It's good to see you. If we can make our way to our uh, seats, that's great. How's everyone? Okay? Yeah. You, <laughs> you had a good week. Yeah? Yeah. <laughs> oh, dear. That's good. <laughs> Uh, hallelujah isn't God good to us yeah you know whether or not we've uh, had a good week or a bad week or things haven't quite worked out the way we wanted or perhaps we've had a wonderful week and you know everything's been uh, we've been on a real high God stays the same and he's there all the time, with us all the time, constantly with us, around us, within us, as we follow him. And we are his children. Amen. And one day he's coming for us. Amen. Our blessed hope. I just want to uh, just read a few verses just as a call to worship. Shall, shall we stand as we, if we're able, as we... Uh, as we hear God's word. And I just want to encourage us this morning. We often say, don't we, that we know what, you know, we know the end of the story as we've read the end of the book. And I just want to read a few verses. Then I saw a new heaven and a new earth. For the first heaven and the first earth had passed away. And the sea was no more. And I saw the holy city, the new Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from God, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. I also heard a loud voice from the throne saying, Behold, the dwelling of God is among men. He shall tabernacle among them. They shall be his people. And God himself shall be among them and be their God. He shall wipe every tear away from their eyes. And death shall be no more. For sh for sh nor shall there be mourning or crying or pain any longer. For the former things have passed away. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Let's thank you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The hope that's within us. The hope that's within us. Hallelujah. Jesus. And the one seated on the throne said, Behold, I am making all things new. Then he said, Right, for these words are trustworthy and true. Then he said to me, It is is done hallelujah as he said those words on the cross it is finished he repeats the words it is done when he returns I am the alpha the omega the beginning and the end to the thirsty I will freely give from the spring of the water of life the one who overcomes shall inherit these things and I will be his God and he will be my son hallelujah we have a glorious future in our Lord amen a glorious future in Jesus hallelujah let's just praise him hallelujah 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 we adore you Lord hallelujah Praise God in the tongue that he's given to you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Bless the Lord, oh my soul. And all that is within me. Hallelujah. 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 We bless you, Lord. We bless you, Lord. We bless you, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Bless the Lord, oh my soul. 
This is done. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Oh, bless the Lord.
in that voice is only. Praise the Father, praise the Son, praise the Spirit, free in one. God of glory, majesty, praise forever to the King of kings. Praise the
opportunity now just as we're in this time just in the presence of our God in the presence of our King just thank him for all that he's done we've sung, sung those words but just thank him from your heart somebody just let's just pray, let's just adore our King hallelujah, hallelujah. when I stand in glory, when I hallelujah. see his face, then I'll serve my King forever in that holy place you, thank you Somebody else, very quickly, come on, let's pray. Let's pray, let's give him thanks. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Bless your name. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for our salvation, Lord. Thank you for all you've done for us, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for taking us. Lord, sinners. Thank you for getting rid of our filthy rags and putting a robe of righteousness upon us. Lord, we thank you, Lord, that we have resurrection life flowing through our veins. Hallelujah. Because you are resurrected, ascended, and glorified. And one day we shall be like you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. One day you are coming for us, Lord. We will be with you, Lord. Hallelujah, hallelujah. What a wonderful day that will be. Hallelujah. Is there anybody else who wants to pray? Hallelujah, hallelujah. Take this opportunity this morning. Hallelujah, hallelujah. salvation.
Waiting here for you With eyes Lifted high In praise And it's you We adore Singing waited for somebody that didn't come it was really disappointing I'm going to tell you when you wait upon the Lord he says I'll renew your strength he will come this morning he will bless us this morning hallelujah 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 hallelujah
acknowledge the Lord. Amen. Take your seats. Just be still for a moment, would you? The guys uh, take their seats as well. I just want us to pray. As we've lifted Jesus up, we've made a platform for him to speak to us, and I believe he's going to do that this morning. Father, in the stillness of these moments, Lord Jesus, you know the issues of our lives. You know what we're all going through. You, we don't have to explain to you. you. You saw us before we got up this morning to, to make our way to church. You see those that are not here. You see those that are away on holiday. But in it all, Lord Jesus, we know that you've got plans for us. We know you've got purposes for us. Lord, and one day you're coming. Oh, glorious day. Bless your word to us now. We pray in the name of Jesus. Amen. We're in the book of 2 Corinthians, if you'd like to turn to chapter 3. Um, some very profound words again this morning. 2 Corinthians and chapter 3. Are we beginning to commend ourselves again, or do we need, like some people, letters of commendation to you or from you? You yourselves are our letter, written on our hearts, known and read by everyone. You show that you are a letter from Christ, the result of our ministry written, not with ink, but with the spirit of the living God, not on tablets of stone, but on the tablets of our human hearts. Such confidence we have through Christ before God, not that we are competent in ourselves to claim anything for ourselves, but our competency comes from God. He has made us competent as ministers of a new covenant, not of the letter of the spirit, not of the letter, but of the spirit. For the letter kills, but the spirit gives life. Now, if the ministry brought death that is engraved in letters on stones came with glory, so the Israelites could not steadily at the face of Mo look steadily on the face of Moses because of the glory, although it was transitionary. Will not the ministry of the Spirit be even more glorious? In the ministry that brought condemnation was glorious. How much more glorious is the ministry that brings righteousness? For what, for what has the glorious, has no glory now in comparison with the surpassing glory in what has been transitory will become glory? How much greater is the glory of that which lasts? Bless the Lord. Paul is starting to talk about the credibility of their ministry and he starts off with saying this. Do we need, like some people, letters of commendation or recommendation to you or from you? You know, I, I don't know about you, but, you know, very often we want people to endorse us, don't we? Endorsements sell books. Like if I bought a book, wrote a book on uh, Chinese, not Chinese cookery, because I can't cook, but Chinese takeaways, I'd like Ken Hom to, to endorse it for me because it would sell more copies, wouldn't it? Amen. You know what I'm trying to say? And, and the, great, the latest thing in, 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 in marketing terms is in influencers. If you can get somebody with a name to influence your product, or you can get somebody that everybody thinks is credible, then suddenly you become a lot stronger than you are. And the apostles say, look, we didn't need that. We didn't need somebody to endorse us. We didn't need somebody to be an influencer for us. In fact, what's happening is a marketing tactic. It's called brand association. I appear bigger and better than I am by associating with somebody that's more credible than I am. <clears throat> and Paul is saying that there's some ministries that have been propping themselves up. Not his, but some ministries have been propping themselves up by people endorsing them. You know, I, I, had, I knew somebody very, very well who travelled all over America and preached, not because the Lord had told him to, but because his friend had opened a door. We do not need propping up by somebody else, do we? We just need to do what God is asking us to do. And all we need to do is rely on God's endorsement. You know, if God calls you, he will anoint you. If God opens a door, he will get you through it. And we don't need the endorsement of men today when the Spirit of God lives on the inside of us. We belong to Jesus this morning. And the only endorsement we need as this church is that we are followers of Jesus Christ and he loves us and that we love him. We don't need Mr. Big on the God channel to tell everybody how good this church is. I don't really care. Those days should be long and well over. We are the sons and daughters of the living God. And all the endorsement we need is that the man on the middle cross says he loves us and he's given himself for us. He said, you yourselves are our letters written on our hearts, known and read by everybody. True ministry, you know, 
changes lives. You don't have to tell anybody you've got a healing ministry. It's self-evident. You know when people go around going, this is my ministry. Well, let's just see it then. You don't have to tell us you've got a ministry. Just do the ministry. So many people want to walk around with a title and say, I'm, I'm, I'm this and I'm that and I'm apostle so and so. You don't need to tell anybody. Just give away the gift that God's given you and the ministry will speak for itself, won't it? God's anointed you to pray for the sick, then pray for the sick. And let's see what God will do. So some people in church say, but if, if only if I had a title, it would be so much better. You don't need a title. Just give away the gift and the ministry that God's put upon your heart. Well, I'm very pastoral. Well, just love people. It'll be self-evident. You don't need the endorsement of anybody else. Just take the ministry that God has given you. And it's quite clear we're, we're under a new covenant and a new agreement. This is, the, this is not the day of the superstars anymore. This is the day of just ordinary men and women that Jesus has saved, filled with his Holy Spirit, doing the works of Jesus. I don't need Benny Hill, Benny Hinn or anybody else. I just need the anointing of the Holy Spirit in my life today. Bless the Lord. If Benny sues me, right, okay, you can... Sort it out. Thanks, leaders. That's, it's all good. You show that you are a letter from Christ, the result of our ministry, not written with ink, but the spirit of the living God, not on tablets of stone, but the tablets of human hearts. True ministry has an incredible effect in changing things. It's a such confidence we have through Christ before God. Not that we are competent in and of ourselves to claim anything for ourselves, but our competency comes from God. Now, you might think that today that people like me stand up here out of self-confidence and you would probably be very, very wrong because what we are under the anointing is not what we are. And, you know, preaching is not religious public speaking. I am not lecturing you this morning on theological matters. I am proclaiming the word of God and letting his spirit take it and bring revelation. Because true preaching and teaching is primarily not about education, but it's about revelation. Have you ever been in a meeting and you can't remember a word that the preacher has said, but somehow, whatever he said, the Holy Ghost got hold of it, and you're sitting in your chair crying your eyes out, and you have no idea why, and you've just engaged with God. Because God just uses normal human channels like us to minister to people. Because the competency is not to do with us, it's to do with him. He says that, doesn't it? Our competency comes from God. I, I love that phrase. Now, when I was in uh, BT, which I worked for for nearly 19 years, I, I went on a two-week training course. It was pass or fail. Anybody hate them pass or fail things? <laughs> it was pass or fail uh, to interview people for jobs. And the whole key point of this is, and they drilled it into us from day one, is you need to understand the person that's sitting in front of you. Have they got the competency to do what you're asking them to do in this new role? Have they got the skills? Have they got the experience? Have they got the character? All of those things you will have to tease out of them by asking a lot of big open questions. So you used to get people in and they, we practiced on loads of people. And you, know, you, you say to them, could you give me a current example where you show creative thinking in the office? And sometimes they could and sometimes they couldn't. But it was all about their competency. It was all about their gifts and their abilities and what they are able to do. But Paul says very clearly here, this has got nothing to do with us because it all comes from the Lord. It's not how clever we are today. And that's why, and I'm going to choose my words carefully, I'm going to be really careful what I say now because I could be misconstrued, is you can send a young man, young woman to Bible college, they can come out with a theological degree, they can go get another master's in theology and still not have the call of God and the blessing of God on their lives, but God can take some illiterate, unlearned young person and put the anointing on them and they can be preachers with fire in their belly. Because the competency comes from the Lord. You can know it all and yet know nothing. And we've seen that time and time again, haven't we? I'm not against education. Of course we want to be more educated. I, 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 I bought some, um, some teaching the other day off the internet about digital church, and I'm trying to educate myself, you'll be glad to know. <laughs> I've done a bit of a training course, and I'm halfway through it. And I've passed every section yet, which is good. It took me four or five attempts, but I, I'm, 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 I'm getting there. But I'm not against education, but there's something better than education. It's called revelation, and it's called the anointing of the Spirit of God. 
You know, and, and we've seen it when God brings his anointed vessels, what a difference it makes. It's not what they know now, it's who they are. Bless the Lord. He has made us competent ministers of the new covenant, not of the letter, but of the, not of the letter, but of the spirit. The letter kills, but the spirit gives life. Now, he's talking about the letter of the law. Do you remember when that woman was caught in adultery in the very act? The Pharisee says to Jesus, does not the law say this woman should be stoned? And of course, the law did say this woman should be stoned. But we know very well that Jesus challenges them on their way of living as well. And we don't know what he wrote in the ground, but I'm certain, uh, well, I'm, I'm kind of positive and we can argue it over a cup of coffee, but I think he wrote the Ten Commandments in the ground. And then he said, who without sin among you? Come on, you, you cast the first stone. Because where the spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. The law kills, but the spirit of God brings life. And he says, the law of the spirit of life has set me free from the law of sin and death. There are two laws at work in the scriptures, and they are equally laws of God, but one fulfills the other. There is the law of the spirit of life, and there's the law of sin and death. The law of sin and death is when we preach the truth of God's word. You know, as we unpack the Old Testament, the New Testament, preach the preachings of Jesus, teach what Moses was given on the tablets. There is none of us that live up to that. No, not one. Scripture says we've all sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. So the, the Bible says that that word is the schoolmaster that brings us to Christ. Because we know very well, as we read the scriptures, we cannot live that way. There's not anybody that's got the strength or the ability or the maturity or anything else to be able to live righteous the way the scriptures lay out. But aren't you glad this morning he's got nothing to do with what we can do, but everything that's to do with Jesus who's done it for us? Because it's the law of the spirit of life that has now set us free from the law of sin and death. Thanks be to God. And God is at work in humanity. And yes, there is conviction. And you know what? If you are not being convicted of your sins, you need to be because we need to know that we are all sinners in need of a saviour. But after conviction comes our repentance to say, God, I can't do this without you, but I'm going to turn around to you. And in all of that, God comes and he brings his liberty, his joy, his peace and his salvation. Isn't that wonderful? That we have been set free this morning from the law that would bring us death. Now the law of the spirit of God now brings us life. And we are free this morning, free indeed. Bless his wonderful name. Now, if the ministry that brought death, which is engraved in the letters of the stone, came with glory, so the Israelites could not look steadily at the face of Moses because it was glory, transitionary though it was, will not the ministry of the Spirit be even more glorious? Paul wants to highlight how great this new covenant we are living in is. He's saying, if it was great under Moses... When Moses' face shone and the people were scared to death, if it was that good then, how much better is it now? Because when Moses' face shone, it only shone for a while and then it faded. But he's talking about a glory that God is putting on us that will not fade. What God has begun in us, he has begun a good work in you. It won't fade, but he will perform it until the day of Jesus Christ. He's continuing to work in us, isn't he? See, under the old covenant... Not everybody felt God personally. God would touch kings and priests and prophets and judges and anointing came upon people. You think about Moses, about Elijah and Elisha, about Samson. Samson is one of my favorites. Like, that's an action film all, all of itself in it, Samson. He said he killed a thousand with the jawbone of an ass. I, I, when my mother-in-law was alive, I used to say, he killed a thousand with a jawbone of an ass. I don't know when anybody else can do that apart from my mother-in-law, but I, I, I can't say that anymore. And he said he ripped a young goat, a young lion as one would rip a young goat. I mean, I've never ripped a young goat. I mean, that just sounds awesome. But the presence of God was all over him. But what the apostle is saying is, that was under an old covenant. How much more is God going to do under his new agreement? Because the new agreement is not just a one-off manifestation for a few. He said, will not the ministry of the Spirit be even more glorious? And as we are studying Scripture, and as we have studied Scripture over these last few months, 
we've started to realize that as individuals, we're here to carry the presence and the glory of God. He's not just an odd few now. And that's why I bang on about it. And I really mean what I'm saying this morning. Is forget the big TV evangelists. You don't have to run to Mr. Big to get healing. The same spirit that raised Jesus from the dead is on the inside of you and of me. We can minister to each other this morning. We don't need a man in his private jet. We do not a man with his private plate. We don't know whether one with his white suit and his grey hair. We just need Jesus, don't we? The, the same Jesus that's promised us that he'd send us the Holy Spirit. In fact, in John's Gospel, he's, he says to his disciples, and they're really, really desperate at this point because things are looking grim. He said, I want you to understand something. It's better that I go away. Can you imagine saying that to the disciples? How could it be possibly better, Jesus, if you leave here? It's bad enough as it is. It looks like you're going to get killed. We're probably going to get killed. How can it possibly be better if you go away? He said, it's going to be better if you go away. Because he said, I'm going to send my Holy Spirit. And what you've seen me do, you're going to do some of that as well. In fact, greater things are you going to do. Now, I struggle with that scripture because I don't think we've ever moved into that greater things. Do you? Uh, me and Andy talk about this very often. Why is it when we're pushing for healing for people, we don't seem to see? It? Well, I think we need to push in a whole lot more because the promises of God are sure. I think sometimes there's a lack of our faith and commitment. I mean, we're just downright determination. We need to push into all God has got for us. And the Holy Spirit power was sent to come upon every believer. Not now, it's now on Moses or Samson or somebody else that we read of in the scriptures. Now it is in the inheritance of all of us that know Jesus Christ to carry the glory of his spirit on the inside of us. You know, and we've heard this preached many, many times. But I actually think the church has almost reverted to the Old Testament model. And so we put somebody on a pedestal and say, look at him, he fills a stadium. Or look at them, how many thousands of people have got in their church. If they could just pray for me, I want to tell you something. The same Jesus that lives in them lives in you. And don't for a second think there is a, some kind of great anointing that comes just because, you know, you've got a flash church and a big number of people in your congregation. Jesus is at work in this world. You know, when we went on mission to Romania, Joe's not here this morning, but, and Sue, uh, Joe's but working, Sue's on holiday. But I remember getting off the plane in Romania, and I said to them this, I said, if it doesn't work in this dirt here, it doesn't work anywhere. I want to gladly tell you, it worked there as we prayed for people. God began to move by his Holy Spirit, because it doesn't matter about the place. I said that to you last week. It's nothing to do with the place, it's all to do with his grace. Nothing to do with the man who stands here. It's got everything to do with our faith as individual believers standing together as a community of people who are believing. We will see God move. We don't need Mr. Big on this platform. Well, I am quite Mr. Big, but not that big. You know. <laughs> the New Testament model is all about us all playing our part in ministry. The Old Testament was good. Man, I, I, I can't wait to see some of them DVDs when I get to heaven. Lord, just show me what, you know, just show me the David and Goliath thing. I can't wait to see that. I'd like to see all of those things played out. I, I want to see it all in technicolor. But right now, we have a job. Don't you think God could do some wonderful things in our time? Yes. You know what? Don't you think God could just raise somebody up out of a wheelchair in this place? And, 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 and I want to be part of all of that. And you know what the scripture tells me? I can be part of all of it. But now I'm kind of going to say, well, actually, maybe I'm too small for that. Maybe we're too insignificant. Maybe not good enough in Sedgley. There's better churches than us. There's better pastors than us. That was never the prerequisite of this, was it, anyway? Jesus says to his disciples, I'm going to go so I can send the Holy Spirit to indwell you. And those bunch of Muppets that he called the disciples who were really, really useless, when the Holy Spirit came, they turned the world upside down, didn't they? The, the very one that says, I, I, well, I, I'm going to deny I denied him three times. Three times. Told the servant girl he wasn't bothered. Said, I, I never knew him anyway. I, I swear to you, I never knew him. And then when the Holy Spirit came, everything was different. And, and I have said, and we prayed it this morning, we need a touch of the Holy Spirit in this church afresh. We need to realize who's living on the inside of us. Instead of walking around like that, we've got no power, no authority. Jesus said all authority has been given to him in heaven and earth. And then he said, therefore, you take that authority and go into all the world and preach the gospel. Lay hands on sick, see him recover. Cast out demons. Freely you have received, freely give. Well, let Benny do it. No, 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 no. Let 
let brother so-and-so come from America and pack out a stadium. I, I don't really care. I, I, honest, I don't know why they keep coming over here. We've got enough preachers, bless the Lord. What we need is local churches full of local people on fire for God with the power of the Holy Spirit going into the community and seeing God do what God said he wants to do. I don't need some bloke charging me £2,000 a sermon. If you can tell me where I can get that, can you just let me know, please? <laughs> but some of these boys take a lot of money and deliver very little apart from some great oratory. I'm not here to preach a great sermon this morning. I'm here to just stir you up and get you desiring more from God. Let the word of God dwell in us richly. Let us see what God would do as we are just open to him. We need the Holy Spirit to guide us and to move us into all truth. And, and you know, and you watch it, I, 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 you know, and I hate it as well when people just get so fixated on one preacher as if like that's God. A, a brother so-and-so said it. I, I, I follow brother so-and-so. I, I've listened to all his podcasts. I don't really care. What I do care is that you engage with God personally, that you have such a relationship with God and a desire for the lost, that you'll do anything to pray, to read the scriptures, to get filled with the Holy Ghost and to make a difference in your family, in this church and in this community. I don't care how much you know, because sometimes people know a whole lot and do very little. It's not about how educated you are, it's about how connected we are in relationship with our Lord Jesus Christ. And you look at the, the life of Jesus. He taught his disciples. But more than that, he, there was heart engagement there. And I, I this morning, want again, fresh, touch God afresh. Let's understand. We're gonna, I'm going to ask you to stand in a minute and pray with me. But here again what the apostle says, just two verses from what we've looked at this morning. But our competency comes from God. So that means this morning, however insignificant you feel, However kind of like empty you feel, however like kind of uneducated you feel, how scripturally illiterate you might feel, how much experience you don't feel you have, and I'm just a new Christian, or I've been in this for 40 years and I just feel barren right now. That's got nothing to do with what the scripture has just said here. He says, our competency comes from God. So our ability to do things for God comes from God. It was never about us to start with, was it? We are but just servants of the Most High God. And I believe this morning God wants to raise some stuff up. And some of you are incredibly gifted in ministry. And I just want to encourage you again, get on with the ministry that God has put in your hand to do. Let's not worry about anybody recognising it when you give it away. You know what the scripture says, when the, the, the gift makes way for the giver. Takes him into the presence of the great. If you will give away what God has put in your hand, however small, you will find out that you will be on the next journey and doors will begin to open for you. That's the whole telling of the parable of the talents. Do you remember that parable? You know, the king got very angry with the one that just dug it in the ground and said he was keeping it safe. Listen, there's no playing it safe in the kingdom of God. God has saved us and given you anointing and blessing and calling and put ministry in your life. Take some risks. What's the worst that can happen? You can fall over. What's the best that can happen? The power of God starts to move and we see things we've never seen before. If we are going to be a comfortable church, we will affect nobody. If you're going to be a comfortable Christian, you will affect nobody. God has made us faith people. He's put his anointing on the inside of us and we're to take what God has put in us and do something with it. So I just want to stir you up today. Don't just come to church on a Sunday and go, I like going to Sedgley. It's a good church. You know? They sing a few songs, pastor talks. He's funny sometimes. Most times he's not funny, but sometimes he is. And we go away and I feel better. Listen, this is not what it's about. I'm here this morning. And I just want to be stand here as, as, as the God-given servant to this house and say, it's time for us to stir ourselves for action because come September, we're going to see an outpouring of the Holy Spirit if we all get on fire. Amen? You can have August off, but come September, we are going to go with all God's got for us. I've got 50 people in my phone to send a text message to tomorrow to ask them to a memorial service in September. Will you pray that God will save families, set them free? And you have people. I've told you, in September, we're going to have our plus one Sunday. Every Sunday, we have a plus one Sunday. I'm going to say next Sunday or the Sunday after is our plus one Sunday. Pray for two weeks, invite somebody and bring them to church. And in, in, a, in a couple of months' time, we will not be able to contain the amount of growth that God is giving to us. But if you leave it all to me and the leaders, we'll still have empty chairs come this time next year. Because it's not about 
leadership alone. We're a body. It's no, it's no good us giving direction and nobody moving. You are the hands, you are the feet, you are the internal organs, you are whatever God has made you to this body here. And if you will play your part, if you will take what God has given you and use it, I'll tell you something, we will see some amazing things together, won't we? And will not the ministry of the Spirit be even more glorious? I, I believe it will. And then you read the Bible and you say, oh, look what God did with David. Look what he did with Elijah. Look what he did with Moses. Look what he did with Ruth. What, look what he did with Esther. Paul says, in your time, in your day, under a new covenant, it could be better than that. Even more glorious. Anybody who wants some glory days? Let me say that about the wolves. I'm forever wolves, forever disappointed. We didn't have many glory days, but, you know, but I always hope for the glory days. But I believe in, by the grace of God, in this church, that we are going to see some glory days. Days of heaven on earth. And it will only happen as we all get engaged with the Holy Spirit. It's got nothing to do with how well we can preach up here, how good the band gets, how well organised we are. All of those things are nice, and we want to be, you know, good stewards of what God has given us. But it's down this morning for your hunger and thirst letting the Holy Spirit on the inside of you take the gift that God has given to you because he's got nothing to do with your competence you might think well I am never going to be able to invite people I am never going to be able to pray for people well just give it a go see what the Lord will do I believe he's going to do some wonderful things among us will you stand let's pray let's ask God to bless us this week as we just step out in faith bless the Lord yeah it's not our competency it's his competency yeah. Father, in the name of Jesus, I just want to pray over this house of prayer this morning, this house of faith. I pray that your people will be sharpened like iron sharpens iron today. I pray that we'll be on fire. I just pray that we will be people that want to reach out to other people. That, Father, that, that the flow of the presence of God will be so powerful in this place that the sick will be healed. That, Father, families will be restored again. That broken marriages will be put back together again. That, Lord, love would be poured out. This community would know that this is the place to go if you want something to happen in your life. And people would be even frightened to come because of what you are doing in this place. So we pray for revival. We pray for blessing. We pray for anointing under the new covenant. Greater glory in our day than in any day that has gone before us. We look forward to the future with gladness and hope, Lord, knowing that you are with us. And if God is for us, then who can? can be against us bless the name of the lord let's just worship him we're going to worship him together we take up the offering don't need to stack the chairs and then andy's got some family stuff to do so after we sing this song we're going to drop the feed but i want you to engage with god right now i'm going to stay up here i just want you to engage with god let's just worship him in our final song let's say god just fill me afresh fill me with the holy spirit put the fire of your presence in me today let healing flow in jesus name bless you lord Look on him and pardon.
our competency comes from him it was never about us anyway it was all because of what Jesus has done and continues to do bless the Lord